If you've worked with Excel's Goal Seek feature, you're familiar with the concept of wanting to get a different result out of a series of calculations. Solver takes the goal step concept and allows us to come up with a different answer by varying the results of many, many different cells, not just one cell. This feature, if you have it installed, will be found on the Data tab in the Analysis group, as you see it here on the screen. If you have not added in this particular add-in, you need to go to the File tab in the ribbon, then choose Options, and then Add-ins, and you'll see Solver in the list here. And after clicking it, the bottom of the screen, you'll want to make sure to Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go. And you'll then see this dialog box, and if it has not been installed, you'll want to check the box for Solver Add-in and click OK. Usually takes 5 to 10 seconds or so. I won't click OK since it is already installed. And at that point, you will see the word Solver appear in the Analysis group here on the Data tab. Let's imagine that in this particular worksheet, where we've got January, February, and March data, the February and March data, in each case, is based on the previous month. We'd like to come up with a higher value here for our gross profit, say 265000 But we do want to be realistic about it. And we're not going to say that this value should be adjusted only by focusing on one of the numbers, say the sales number. But what if we say we want to allow the sales number to change, also the shipping number, maybe the cost of goods here as well. And furthermore, we want to make sure that these changes don't go beyond certain limits. The term constraints is what we'll be using here. So let's say we want to allow these sales to grow somewhat, not too much, shipping income to grow, and maybe for the cost of goods, maybe to let that shrink. We want this to be 265000 To activate Solver, we'll click the Solver button in the Analysis group on the Data tab. And our set objective here is to make this cell, the E14, we'll click on it now, be equal to the value of 265000 by changing variable cells, and we can list up to 32 of them here. I'm going to drag across cells B5 and B6, put in a comma, and then click on cell B10. We want to allow these cells to change, but we do want to set up some constraints here. So let's add a constraint. And the first constraint will be that this cell B5, which we want to grow, we want it to stay less than, let's say, 140,000. Now, we don't know if that's going to be enough. It probably will be, but you probably have a sense of whether it would work or not. But we want to be realistic. Let's say it's never going to go above that unless something really unusual happens. Let's add another constraint. Let's allow the shipping income to grow here too, but no more than 28,000. Let's add another constraint this time looking at the cost of goods. Our profits will go up if the cost of goods drops a bit, so let's allow that to happen. Let's reverse the order of the arrows here. We want to allow this number to shrink a bit, but let's say it would be unrealistic to think that this would ever go below 75,000. Now, if we've chosen numbers that are beyond the possibilities here, we're not going to get an answer. And let's say if we want no more constraints here, we'll click OK. And now we're ready to ask Solver to provide an answer. If you are familiar with mathematical modeling techniques, you might want to explore the solving method being used. Currently, it's GRG nonlinear. You also have some others here, simplex LP and evolutionary. If we click Solve, we hope, and we won't always have this be true, but we hope Solver will come up with an answer. And it did. Solver found a solution. And right now we're seeing that solution in the background. Cell B5 used to have 137,000 in it. And cell B6 used to be 26,700. And cell B10 used to be 76,500. So they've all been changed. Now we have the option of restoring the original values or keeping this. 
If we wanted to explore further, perhaps maybe Solver didn't find an answer, we might want to restore the original values, return to Solver parameters dialog. Now, if I keep the solution here, and if I click OK, while that button has been selected, I will be saving the current display as we see it on the worksheet. So if this is a concern, what you might have done ahead of time is made a backup copy of this sheet. So if you're a little concerned about that, maybe in this case, restore the original values, click OK. If you do want to explore this particular feature further, you might want to explore some of the options. And without much background in this particular feature, you might not know what to do with these various selections. So I would suggest going to www.solver.com where you'll find more information on this feature. It is a sophisticated mathematical modeling tool, and it is a great tool for handling complex situations like the one we saw here.